everybody, this is Roxy, and I wanted to show a swap that we did on Your Paper Pantry. Um, it's using embroidery hoops, and Yoli Bean and I have been talking about embroidery hoops and doing stuff with them for a couple of years, and um, I finally talked Teresa Rogers into, um, she's a hostess for our Romantic Homes um, swap on Your Paper Pantry, and I... I cajoled her into hosting this swap because I've tried it a couple times and nobody signs up. Hopefully when people see what Teresa and I made, they might get encouraged at how easy and fun it is. So um, her theme was shabby chic. And I'm not a shabby chic person, but I made an attempt. And the idea was to make it a pocket um, so that you can put like a gift card and stuff in. And it was just a small, I think this is like a, maybe a seven or eight inch um, hoop. But anyways, so I will show some of the products I did. Um, first of all, I used this <clears throat> burlap from my stash. My um, girlfriend's daughter had a baby and she wanted to take pictures of the baby in a suitcase. And I have a bunch of vintage suitcases, so... Um, she bought the material that she wanted, and I glued it into my suitcase, and uh, the pictures turned out fabulous. And then she gave me just the rest of the material, because they're not crafty, that per se. So that's where the background came from. And all you do is you put this over the bottom hoop, the piece of the material, and then you unscrew this as much as you can without pulling it out, and then push that over it. And what I did with the hoop... I used, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Victoria Velvet, and I just used my little dauber thing and rubbed it all over the place um, to make it kind of nice and distressed in pink, just a subtle pink. Then I used, I can't remember who gave this to me, but it um, came in a rack, oh, I wish I could remember. But I used this, I put, I laid that piece down, and then I put, what is that? Oh my gosh. Well, whoever gave it to me, I looked everywhere for an Eiffel Tower for this darn thing. Anyways, in my stash, I know I have them, but I couldn't find any, and there's one right there. I laid, so I laid the lace down first. This is without all the decoration, of course. And then I laid this, this is making memories. Ugh. Hmm, I'm running out. I gave so much of it away, and now there's hardly any left. See, that's why you hoard. So I first laid the lace down, then laid this down on top of the fabric, and then put the top hoop over so it catches everything nice and tight, and that made it a pocket. And then I just glued along the bottom of the lace underneath, so there's a pocket. Very simple. And then I cut off all the fabric down to the hoop and then I just added glue around there and then laid this on a piece of scrapbook paper, put weight on it. This is before all the decoration again. Put weight on it and so that there's a nice backing to it. All right, then I went into my stash and I found a, let me see if I can get this over here. I found a little key um, that I, put gesso on and then I rubbed it with the Victorian velvet. Same with this butterfly over here. And then these feathers, I bought these years ago at Tuesday morning and I'm about out of those too now. Um, so I just, um, along with a Prima, couple Prima plain flowers. This is a Recollections from that set. And then, oh, and then these. This, I used to, my scrubby used to, and I used to have antique booths in town. And this was one in downtown St. Paul that we were at. And the owner used to get the coolest millinery and whatnot. So this was a fascinator that she had. And I thought, oh, that'd be really cool to cut up and use for crafts. Well, I put it on my head, and that was the end of that idea for using it. So I just wore it when I was at the, you know, kind of like a dork. 
But it was actually really, really cool. Um, but I have since, it had a bunch of little black bows. So I have since used it. So what I did was I cut some of the netting and it's really fragile. Like I could easily tear this if I wanted. But I just put some of the netting down and then two of the, oh these are just beautiful, really beautiful velvet vintage flowers from this. I put two sprays down and then I added some of the flowers from these. I bought these last year at Junk Bonanza from a really cool shop. I think it's called Rose Mill. Let me see. Forgive me. Nope, she doesn't have her name on here. But I'm pretty sure it's a Rose Mill, M-I-L-L-E. And I think she has an online shop. She used to be at the Mall of America for about three months. And then it just, I don't think it was the right place for her. Um, but anyway, so then I took one of the bows and glued that up here. And then I added some of those pink and white flowers, some of the feathers, tucked them in there, and um, printed off some of photos from my um, stash. I added one that has some pink. So kind of, this is probably more 1910s, but I tried to get like late 1800s for Victorian. And I thought this is cute because they both have big black velvet bows in their hair. And so if without the cards, that's what it looks like. So I hope Teresa likes it. But, you know, we are making them to give to somebody. But after seeing the one she made me, ugh, it's gorgeous. And it's not leaving this house no matter what. No matter what crazy whim I get. So anyways, there's mine. I hope she decides to keep it in case she likes it. But anyways, please come and join us at Your Paper Pantry. I'm going to try this swap again this month. Um, Teresa's taking a break because she's working two jobs in, as an RN, and I think it's emergency RN at that. Um, so I'm gonna, she's going to take a few months off swap hosting, and I will continue her romantic home um, swap with embroidery hoops because these really are fun. They're so fun. And this took about, oh my gosh, from start to finish, maybe about an hour. It wasn't very long because I kind of had, got an idea in my head and then just went with it. So um, come and join us. It's only $12 a year. Thanks for watching. Bye.